Do you wanna add 10 pounds to your squat? Then this video's not for you. Say 10X if you, if you know what I'm talking about. We're gonna give you five methods to 10X your squat. And we're gonna start, right? Now. First you've got the gym bros saying, all you really have to do is go leg press a little bit more. And then you've got the functional gurus who don't even want to load a barbell on their back. There's gotta be a better way to get my squat up. Squatting is the cornerstone of strength training. It's a treasure trove of fitness wealth. It can improve your mobility in your ankles, your hips, your knees, your lower back. The squat can increase global innervation, which leads to a greater amount of musculature and an improvement in your absolute strength. It can improve the way that your body coordinates, so it can increase the communication between your quads, your glutes, your lower back, your entire posterior chain for that matter, including your hamstrings, and even to a point, your calves. It can improve that dynamic trunk control, which will make it easier to execute high-speed movements. Before we start smashing those squat PRs, we're gonna be giving away one free t-shirt to anyone watching this video. All you have to do is comment down below, make sure that all of your notifications are on, you've subscribed to the channel, and then you've gotta show up to next week's YouTube Live, which is gonna happen Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, let's get back to smashing your squat PR. So you wanna blow up your squat. You need to learn how to Breathe. So if I'm blasting the weight from Freddie Gibbs, and I wanna hit some monster weight on my back squat, I have to understand when is the right time to actually breathe? How am I going to be breathing? And we have to look at my sweet dad bod here, okay? So if I'm thinking about getting set and about to execute a big squat, I want to inhale when I'm at the top of the squat. So we can breathe in through our mouth and nose, and we wanna fill that gut and push the belly forward, okay? If I wanna push that belly forward, I'm also gonna focus on retracting my rhomboids. That's gonna create a very stable position. Now, if we're gonna think about breathing, we also have to think about our posture, and typically I will say, 80 to 90% of the time, you should be doing a high bar back squat. So when I'm thinking about that, I'm gonna focus on the barbell placement at the top of my back. And I even like to think about my elbows more under the bar than back behind the bar. And that's gonna help establish that posture. So if I'm breathing here, one thing I can do, I guess I'm always breathing, but if I'm breathing about to take this off the rack, I can get those elbows set and stand that up, okay? And I wanna have those elbows under the bar. Now, the next step would be establishing that foot position. I have longer limbs, I have longer legs. I like to squat where I tend to pull with my deadlift or pull with my snatch or pull with my clean. So I'm in this position here. And I want that upright posture out of the bottom. I don't wanna be leaning forward. If I have a low bar back squat, my elbows will get a little bit more behind the bar. And that's gonna be okay with that barbell position. Now again, if I focus entirely on this, and I'm not actually talking, my squat would be established with that foot position in the pulling position. My elbows are underneath. And that's how we're gonna execute that back squat with proper posture, proper stance, proper breathing. And since we're talking about the squat, I actually like to squat pretty regularly, almost daily. We can do a heavier squat session on a leg power day. That's gonna be day one. And typically, if we're doing high frequency squats, I would recommend doing that during the exposure phase and during the comprehension phase. On that leg power day, we might do five triples and then one drop set of six, okay? And you can do that with about two and a half minutes of rest. Now, another day, the impulse day, we can do a different variation where we're focusing on more speed. We're focusing on faster movement, tighter positions. So that would be day four. And you might only do four sets of three or even four sets of four at an unbroken pace, maybe only using 70 to 75% of your overall max, but still, focusing on good speed of movement. And I can hear you guys even saying, well, if we're squatting really frequently almost every day, that's gonna get really boring. But fortunately, we can get really creative with variations that will also lead to an improvement in your overall back squat. We can do a back squat, a front squat, a single leg squat, a pause squat, a double bounce squat, a tempo squat, 
with a slow eccentric, a low bar squat, a zombie squat, a box squat. That's about it. When you're using variations, I would stick with comprehension phase and you can start to pull that into the ascension phase as well. I typically would do these again on impulse day, but even on athlete day. And you could use rep schemes like waves, you could use potentiation where you're doing like a one six method or even cluster sets. And when you're using those tempo squats or pause squats, try to go like three to five seconds on the eccentric and you can use anywhere from 70 to even 85% of your max on those slow eccentrics. Who says we're all created equal? Just look at the length of my legs. So one of the best ways to improve absolute strength in long-limbed individuals, think about basketball players, volleyball players, anyone who has longer legs in general in a relative proportion to their torso is by using a single leg squat. This is really gonna isolate their hamstrings, their glutes, their lower back. I know it's not technically an isolation movement, but it will really light that up. And what's interesting is that if you bring that foot position a little bit closer, it's also gonna drive up their quad strength. So Short-limbed individuals could benefit from doing a single leg squat by putting their front foot more forward, okay? Now, I'm not a short-limbed individual with my legs, but if I have that front foot a little bit more forward, it's gonna focus on my glutes and my hamstrings a little bit more. And that's an area where a lot of short-legged individuals struggle when they're coming out of the bottom position of a back squat or even pulling off the floor. So single leg squats are a fantastic way to light them up with their hamstrings. Single leg squats are probably my favorite all-time exercise when I'm thinking about absolute strength that transfers to sports performance. Now, if you think about building speed, strength, stability, that dynamic trunk control, this is all stuff we use inside of our app Peak Strength. This is what has developed a lot of our freak athletes. But more on that later. Now, we talked about training weaknesses and that's a big benefit behind doing single leg squats. Another way to train a weakness is to do zombie squats or even do front squats. And a lot of people don't want to do these exercises, but they're absolutely phenomenal for your lower back strength and even trunk control. But the big question comes back to, how frequently should we be training one leg versus both legs? Now, one unique way that you can train bilateral squats and unilateral squats is setting up that leg power day. Let's say we're deep inside the summit phase. We wanna focus on big time strength bilaterally. That's where we can hit heavy back squats. Okay, so we can do five sets of two, five sets of three, something like that. And then on the impulse day, we wanna focus on speed. We wanna focus on being a little bit more coordinated. That's where we can hit those single leg squats. Let's say four triples unbroken at 65 to 70%, something like that. And then another big factor that can come into play is that you can actually use a single leg squat or a goblet single leg squat, something like that, as an accessory on that leg power day. So you do that big back squat and then maybe you do light single leg squats with a goblet position or you do walking lunges or even dumbbell step ups so that you can still train that unilateral strength and stability. And you can use all these variations to target your weaknesses inside of our app, Peak Strength. You can head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store, where you're gonna get seven free days of training. That's gonna include five free workouts where you're also going to see how much tonnage you're lifting in each and every workout. And during these seven free days, you can cancel at any time. The worst thing that you can get is five free workouts. Now, start that journey so that you can attain that peak strength. And we've got one more trick that we're going to give you to help blow up your back squat. So thick thighs saves lives. But what does that matter if you can't move quickly based off that force production? And that's where plyometrics comes into play. If we're focusing on improving blast impulse, now we're gonna be able to recruit at very, very high speeds. And that's a big factor coming out of the bottom position of a squat. We want to improve that blast impulse so that we can recruit those high threshold motor units, be a little bit more elastic, and in turn, drive that squat a little bit higher. Now, another variation that you can use that's great for your knee health, remember, our knees gotta be healthy if we wanna improve our back squat, if our knees are banged up. It's really hard to get better at back squatting. And this is another exercise that's gonna help you cycle quickly and that's gonna transfer to unbroken back squats. So I like to think about what plyometric movements are gonna improve my elasticity 
and which ones will transfer to what specific variation. So then, working backwards, if I have an athlete who sucks at unbroken back squats, they're gonna do this. Okay, so you can do a stair jump. I actually landed pretty well on those. I was a little quiet. Now, another factor that I like to do is that if we're training on athlete day, athlete day is gonna be day three. Again, we go over this inside of peak strength. We're gonna do unilateral jumps and bilateral jumps. And the reason we do that is because we wanna see, does the athlete have any glaring issues unilaterally? Do they hip shift? Do they cave on one knee to the other? Because that can lead to problems in their overall performance. So that's where this jump series might come into play and help alleviate any of those problems. Start on one leg here, land two legs, land two legs, plant, come back, jump. That's a really unique bilateral and unilateral series that you can use to improve your elasticity. A lot of people who squat all the time sort of move like this. And you know who I'm talking about. So we need to make sure that we're being as athletic as possible. And then finally, we can also just start with an easy box jump here, come back and react as fast as possible. So this might be the first one that you do. Then you build into that stair jump and then finally use the unilateral and bilateral jumps to create a more athletic individual, which creates more athletic muscle, which leads to that better back squat. So remember, you've got to focus on breathing properly. Establish your technique. Focus on specific variations that expose those weaknesses so you can keep improving your back squat. And then make sure that you're using athlete day, you're using those plyometric series to create more elasticity, to create blast impulse. All of those things have to be done on a regular basis so that you can 10X your back squat. Say 10X if you, if you know what I'm talking about. And if you need help with your programming, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, and download Peak Strength today so that you can start that journey to attain your peak strength. Because remember, freaks, if you guys want to become a champion, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.